Few things cause more worry and speculation for farmers than the USDA crop reports. Report days can see the huge swings in the market, and often the numbers seem to have no correlation to what farmers are seeing with their own eyes in their own fields. This week on Successful Farming TV, we'll see how the USDA gets their numbers. Don't go away. Ever wondered how the USDA comes up with those crop report numbers? Recently, Agriculture.com's Jeff Caldwell spent a day with the director of the National Agricultural Statistics Service at the Iowa Field Office and a NASA enumerator while they conducted their infield objective yield surveys for the October 12 crop report. We start out the process in July uh, from our June area survey fields. We want to make sure we have a random sampling of fields across the state for corn and soybeans. Uh, we select 290 corn fields and 210 soybean fields all throughout the state. Again, uh, random selection. And once we send our enumerators out there to start collecting data, again, we tell them how many rows and paces to go into the field. They don't just stop along the road and, and, and make some counts. They actually are instructed how many rows and paces to go into the field. So uh, they get out there, they set out two plots in each one of those fields. Uh, the corn plots are uh, two rows 15 feet long, and on the soybeans it's two rows that are three foot six inches long. Then they're instructed to make specific counts uh, in those plots each month, which uh, not only you know, gives us a good absolute measure of the yield, but as the months progress and the weather changes, it gives us a, me a measure of change from month to month as well. Talk a little bit about how, how you set out to uh, make sure that this data is, is random and, and as such uh, as objective as possible. Well, uh, it just goes back to, like I said, the, the enumerators are given specific instructions. They don't have a choice where the, the plots go, so they can't pick a good part of the field or a bad part of the field. We're looking for a random representative part of the field. And it's not that we're trying to make a yield estimate for that field, but the sample is drawn to represent the state as a whole. So if you think of the state as one, you know, one big corn field or one big soybean field, we're looking for 290 spots within that field for corn and 210 on soybeans that are randomly uh, located and, and represent the overall uh, yield potential of the crop. I've been going out the last week and each month starting in July. And the first few months, you take counts of uh, <clears throat> fruit, like corn, you count ears, stalks with ears, beans, you count nodes, blooms, pods. Well, now we're getting to harvest time, and we go out back and we'll count the fruit again. Uh, for soybeans, we'll count the pods. Twelve. Then we'll also harvest, uh, there's two units in each field. We'll harvest a three-foot section a row in each field and send that to the lab so that they can get moisture content. But... <clears throat> mainly get shelling fraction. In other words, you get how much does this produce, and then they'll expand that up to get a yield for beans. Corn's basically the same thing, except it's a 15-foot section. We'll go back, we'll count the ears, and then we'll harvest, uh, let's see, 15 foot a row in each unit, and we'll send four ears into the lab, <clears throat> and then the rest of it will weigh and get a weight here, and then we'll leave that with the farmer. It's a pretty intensive process, then, the collection of this data. Then. Yeah, it is. Uh, you're uh, you, uh, the counts are pretty intense, especially like, uh, well, for example, soybeans. The first uh, month you go out there, you better just get it in your mind you're going to be there an hour or two because basically you're counting nodes. Well, you count plants, then nodes on the plants, uh, blooms. So in the early, when the plant's blooming, you know, your counts could be a hundred or more on each plant. So it's pretty intense. Um, and then uh, you mentioned the gleaning when you go back and uh, you pick up all the loose kernels and beans and that kind of thing to get a harvest loss. Because basically when you're out there earlier, when you harvest it, you're getting the biological yield, but the combine doesn't get everything. To the folks who, who might have doubts or, or questions about the, the process of collecting the data and how that data in turn is, is indicative of the crop, uh, you, you know, what, what would you say, say to folks like that? Uh, I would just say, you know, our, our procedures are time-tested. 
We've been doing this for, for a long time. Uh, we refine the procedures when they need to be refined. Uh, like I mentioned to you, we're trying to determine the number of ears or pods that are out there, how much those weigh, and then we subtract a harvest loss after that by going out into the field after farmers harvest and, and actually getting a measure of harvest loss. So, you know, there's a lot of other folks out there doing reports as well. I would say, you know, the markets do move after the USDA reports. Uh, my feeling on that, I guess, is that we must be adding some value that uh, people didn't know beforehand. Otherwise, if everything was already built into the market, that, you know, the prices wouldn't move as much as they do. Uh, you know, whether that's good or bad, um, you know, it depends, I guess, on whether you're a buyer or a seller. And uh, we're really, our main objective is to put the most accurate uh, production report out as we can to give people the information they need to make the best decisions that they can for their business, whether that's a, a livestock operation that's buying corn or, or you know, soybean meal, or is that, if that's a grain farmer that's selling his crops. Thanks, Jeff. Be sure to join me on agriculture.com's marketing talk page for all the coverage leading up to that October 12th report. And on the day of the report, we will once again be bringing you live video coverage of the CME press briefing. For Successful Farming TV, I'm Mike McGinnis.